Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Believe in Tennessee Football. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Curbison, joining Free Bacon. Have another great one for you guys. Um, we are talking SEC here, uh, adding a little bit more to our repertoire, as you would say. Uh, but before we get into any of that, um, please, if you're watching, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, please leave a comment. Um, if you're just listening, rate and review, download, re-download, uh, helps us so much. Uh, if you want to follow us on social media, at Believe in Tennessee for our main account, at rbacon26 for read, at Kyler Curveson for myself. Uh, we have merch out right now, How We Doing Bud t-shirts in orange and in white. So go check those out. Great gifts for the all fans out there. Um, but on this podcast, we are going over SEC news Alabama hiring a new OC, uh, Saban turning down some NIL uh, searching recruits, um, Stetson Bidden getting a little public intox down in Texas, and teams claiming previous players, and are they warranted to that or not? So, fun podcast. Uh, let's jump into it. By the game. Snap, the kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no, sir. Reed. No, sir. Reed. Final score. Tennessee 20, Florida 17. Pandemonium reigns. Looks, loads up, fires long for the end zone. The pass is going to be caught by Tennessee. Tennessee wins. by Tennessee to one Jennings. Jennings makes the catch in the end zone on the Hail Mary. Down at the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. What did he do? All he did was score. Joey Kent, touchdown on play number one. All right, so before we jump into the podcast, got to shout out our number one sponsor, betonline.ag. It is the place to go for betting. It is your number one source for betting. They have all the odds, all the team totals, all the parlays that you could ever want, and they cover every sport. You got NFL, you got NBA, you got tennis, you got golf, you got baseball, you got everything you could think of. It is the place to go if you're going to bet on anything and make anything exciting. So for first-time signups, go over to betonline.ag, and for a 50% welcome bonus, use promo code BELIEVE. B-L-E-A-V at checkout and receive that 50% welcome bonus. Bet online where the game starts. All right. Welcome in, everybody. Uh, got a great podcast ahead of you. Um, this is a little bit different than what we usually do. This is going to be diving into the SEC um, and a little news going on in SEC, some topics, some gossip, all that kind of stuff. So it's just a little added bonus. We're going to try – an attempt to do this more often. Now, it all depends on my editing skills, but we are going to try and get there. Um, before we get into all of that, and before we touch on everything SEC, Reed, how we doing, bud? Reed, how we doing, bud? Kyler, how we doing, bud? <laughs> doing great. If Annie was in here, Annie, how you doing, bud? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah, this is just something a little different. Um, we're just we're just playing. We're just we're just in the kitchen. Exactly. We're just cooking some. We're just cooking some stuff up. We're just whipping some stuff up. We're can I get talk. can I get some spices? Can I get some herbs? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that a TikTok video? Or no idea. I just made it up. <laughs> I mean, I'm freaking like hilarious, dude. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Can I? What'd you do? Would you? Can I get some herbs? Can, can I, I get, get some spices? Can I get some herbs? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So we're gonna talk just straight SEC, and so yeah. Tennessee's not involved right now because Tennessee is not on the topic list. But we're gonna be throwing out hopefully a lot more videos. So we're gonna be doing, like I said, some SEC talk. I love how we act like it's like January like second. I mean it's already February. <laughs> I know, dude. It's, it's a long year though. We're it's a long year. We're pacing ourselves. So we're gonna be talking, we're gonna be trying videos of still our Tennessee videos. We're about to start breaking down 
some basketball stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I have decided if I'm even ready for it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're gonna yeah, do so some technically, SCT. this is this is coming out after our Tennessee podcast. So if you're listening to this, you've already listened to it, but this is being mm -hmm. recorded before our Tennessee podcast. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't even I didn't even know how you were doing it. Um, so we'll do some SEC stuff, and then we'll obviously do our Tennessee breakdowns. And then we're also, you know, try to do some Tennessee recruiting stuff, just those little quick snippets of people that right. transfer in or, or commit and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, a little Saturday morning, you got me out of bed to do this. And I say you got me out of bed. I think it's 11. So, uh, yeah, but, Reed, uh, Reed really takes advantage of his Friday, Saturday nights with some video games and staying up late. And enjoying himself and sleeping in, which yeah. I mean, I get. I will say, I will say, I was up decently late last night, and the boys were playing some box, but I did not play box. Some um, box. What's that? Some box. Yeah. Like, so they hey, like that X is going to push you over the edge for you to say X. I mean, they were just boxing it up. They were just Xboxing it up. I mean, they were just gaming it up. You're but, you're uh, you're like the you're like the influencers who say, "I'm going to Bucks to get some coffee." Uh, don't put that on me. See, I don't, <laughs> oh, I, don't, well. I don't even know like the influencer world because I just don't see any of that garbage. But uh, so I didn't know that they. I didn't even know. Uh, it's just nice abbreviations. People like to overuse them. Yeah, I didn't even know about that. Bucks, yeah. I'm gonna go get me some bucks, yeah. That's right. Uh, so, um, but no, I, I just, yeah, like, but I could go to bed, honestly, bro. I could go to bed at like twelve, twelve thirty, like not even super late. But like the next morning, if I don't really have anything, like I might wake up at nine thirty, ten. But your boy's laying in bed probably till like eleven, eleven thirty. You know, it's like I just that's my that's my relaxation time. And then I also, you know, I have been going to mass on Saturdays. So then Sunday, I do get to sleep in a little bit more. But if I don't sleep in on Sunday, then I always crush my Sunday afternoon nap. So I mean, yeah, just meals enjoy just... it. Just enjoy it while you got it. Because there's going to be a point, yeah. you know, yeah. when you're married yeah. and have kids. And it's like, you're never waking up past seven on Saturdays. No, no. I mean, I'm going to be the type that's like, because I, you know, I, I want to have a bunch of kids. But it's like, I'm going to be the type that like, when I put them down, I'm like, all right, honey, I'm going, <laughs> I'm laying down with them. Yeah. They're in they're in bed. We're brushing our teeth together. Like that's what's that's what's going on. Yeah. No, but I'm saying nap time. Like if it's like one o'clock. <laughs> oh, no, I'm saying you're it's talking like about the little ones, like the newborns. Like, hey, I just put them down for a nap. I'm about to go take one myself. Exactly. Gotcha. It's like one. In, it's, it's like one in the afternoon. It's like you know, little 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 Reed over here. He's he's getting tired. I'm gonna put him down, and then I'm gonna go get some seeds too. And she's like, "Well, we got stuff to do." I'm like, "All right, well, I'll see you in about two hours." No, I'm just kidding. But I'm doing well. Let's talk this. Uh, let's talk this SEC hot topics. Let's do it. Um, we got. I mean, we can start a bunch of different places. But uh, let's start let's with start. Saban. Let's start with uh, Tommy Reese being. No, OC. we'll start. We'll start with Saban. It's my favorite thing. Okay, let's start with Saban. Saban goes on some kind of I don't know show something that whatever says that. Had a recruit, college kid, corner coming out of high school, or not college, high school kid coming out of high school, wanting $800,000 to come to Alabama. Um, And Saban said, hell no. Then there was a transfer kid who came up to Saban saying he wanted $500,000 and to get yes. his girlfriend into law school there. And Saban said, hell no. Um, this part of Saban is the part that I love. The fact that he is such a freaking good coach and kicks Tennessee's ass a lot of the times is the part I hate. But this right here to go, why in the frick do you think you deserve this in any way, shape or form? You've never been on this team before. You've never done anything. The like the, the, the recruits are not understanding that the NIL is an opportunity for you to work and get money. Like you have to put forth effort to get money. That was not allowed. Like before NIL 
college athletes could not have a job. They could not earn money in any way because it was seen as benefits. Now you can earn money. That's the whole point of it. So you aren't a broke college kid all of the time. These guys are seeing it as just donations. Just please donate me $500,000 and I'll come to Alabama. Like Saban needs you. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, the amount of recruiting that he's done, the five stars he's brought in, the four stars he's brought in, like he just had the number one class. Like the the audacity of these kids to be like, well, I mean, I'm more important. You should pay me. But would some say that of the years past that he's been go ahead and throwing out some money before NIL came around? I mean Which, uh you know, I, I I went I've been to Tuscaloosa a couple of times. I had some I had some reasons to be down there. Uh and, and I was yeah. around the pro, I was around the program, so I saw some stuff. I would I would I would definitely say so. But who, now, do think, who do you think brings up the fact or puts it into no play yeah, yeah, hold on that hold money on. is get is going to this man? Like if you yeah. are a good recruit and Saban thinks you're a good recruit and he wants you on your team. He is sliding it over to you. You don't have to ask for it. To go up to him and be desperate enough and ask, well, I'm not coming here unless I get this. Like the audacity to do that to a seven time national championship coach is insane to me. Like the balls. So, well, first off, I, I was, that was like, I was making a joke. Like, I, you know, I do think that all of them have cheated and had done stuff and had given away stuff uh, before NIL. But I, so I'm going to be a little bit different here is a the, I'm, I agree with you. I, I love Saban. Uh, I, I, I pretty much love everything about him, except some of his takes where he goes on these tangents and he does. I think the only thing I would change about him because he is my goat uh, is when he will complain about stuff that he knows he's going to have to deal with and that it's going to affect him and it's going to affect his vice grip on college football. Like you know, when I think, um, like, they like change the play play clock. clock. Yeah, play clock. And then like because he was Changed talking the 40, about – The 40-second rundown <laughs> instead of resetting at 25. He was – Yes. All all that stuff is his time because he, you know, he was pro style and then he and then he didn't like the hurry up offenses and was talking about maybe like I I, I want to say he talked about maybe it would cause injuries and yeah. this this different stuff. So it's like saving, like, come on, bro, like you're you're the goat. Like and the funny thing is like none of that stuff even matters now. You know, it's like fast, you know, go back, let's jump in a time machine and go back, and it's like 2012, 2013, and he's like complaining about all these things, and now it's like a non-issue, but like he—that's that, me personally. If he just took those things away and was just like the winner, the winner that he is, and like this dog that he is when he's telling these recruits, like, "Hey, basically, f off." Like, I love all that about him. So, I, first off, I, I jumped and interrupted you when you said the five hundred thousand because I was so excited. And I wanted to make sure you said that the guy said, "Hey, can you get my girlfriend into Alabama law school?" Like that yeah. is that is so funny to me. And I, <laughs> if I was saving, I'd be like. I mean, she either has the grades or she doesn't. She's gonna apply. <laughs> yeah, what do you want me to? <laughs> she she can apply here if she wants. Now, granted, Nick Saban could get someone in. I mean, all Saban's got to do is walk over to wherever the law school is. And be like, hey, you know, Kyler. Yeah, we need to get him in here. And they're like, <laughs> okay, as yeah. long as he's not a complete idiot. Um, so I I love everything about this. Now, the the where I where I'm a little bit different from you is I, I'm fine with the kids asking for this. Would I give it to them? Hell no. And. I agree with what Saban said in my opinion that like I would use NIL uh, if I was a head coach to reward. I, I would I would try my best to keep it as a reward to someone who comes on and does a great job for the University of blank, wherever I'm coaching. And they they do a really good job. They become a really good player. And it's like, hey, now I am going to try to get your name out there to go do ads for – you know, restaurants and local businesses. And I mean, we've seen some of these guys get some pretty big ones and, you know, and so it's like, I, I like that, but, but really only Saban and probably Kirby smart, maybe, maybe Ohio state and Michigan in some instances, not completely, but I would say really it's just Bama 
Um, and well, and maybe Clemson a little bit, but I would say really Bama and Georgia are the ones that can be like, we don't have to really offer NIL to the top level. It's because you were making a comment that like, it, it should be something that's used to be earned what you've got here, not to attract you here. But when you're in Tennessee's case, like we do need to pay Nico and, and get him here because we're not in a position. So it's like for those really, really, really high level blue chippers, I'm fine with doing what you got to do to get them on campus because we could argue that technically they have earned it at a different yeah. level. They haven't earned it at Tennessee, but, 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 but that is why, it pays to be the best because you can play by a different set of rules. So I was thinking about this, you know, I, I, since I graduated college, I've been in staffing and recruiting and in staffing and recruiting. Um, sometimes, you, you, got, you got to run into the same thing. <laughs> a little bit. No, a little bit different. I'm using this analogy for a little bit different. So in staffing and recruiting, um, and when I was hired for my first company that I was with for about seven, six and a half years, I took over the Nashville office. I was hired as the branch manager in Nashville and, and, and we were making a new office. So it was a brand new office, which it was very, very difficult, but I am very, very happy for that experience and that, that hard work that I put in. But it was funny because when you're starting out, it's like sometimes you have to take on clients or deal with some problem children because you are trying to make that. And I always remember, I was like, I cannot wait till I make my book of business to where it's like, I can tell these people to basically like in a very professional way, like screw off, you know? And, and, and I, and I don't, I, you know, you know me, like I'm not that type of person. I was always very nice, professional and would do what I can. But if someone did not treat me or my employees with respect and they would want to act in a way, I just like, like, I would just be like, you know, I'd maybe get a little baby shot in there if they were dicks about it. And I'd be like, yeah, hey, we're just we're just not going to work with you guys anymore. Thanks for your business and just be done yeah. with it. And so this that's how Saban is like Saban has his book of business so well that he doesn't even have to consider people like this. Like even if they are the blue chip of the blue chip, maybe they are 100, out, you know, they're 99 man rating. OK, well, he would probably like a 99 man rating. But guess what? He's got like four 95s, 96, 97s. Wait, <laughs> exactly. So that's just what. So that's what I thought about it. But Saban's book of business is so good that he can tell these guys screw off. And the last thing, I'm fine. If if a kid is in position from their God given talent or their hard work or both, and they are ranked the number whatever player in the nation, and they have their family and handlers and whoever else that are like, this is our time to cash in. Like this is their little bit of lottery. Like. All, all someone can tell you is no. So if that player doesn't really care about going to Bama or doesn't really care about going to Georgia or Clemson or Ohio State or, or going somewhere to win, and he's just fine with absolutely just making money and just showing up and playing for a 6-6 six and six team, that's fine. Then this guy can go around to different colleges and just say, hey, this is what I'm going to want to – and someone's going to pay it. And then you know what? There he's He just made you know, $400,000, $500,000, as a 17-, 18-year-old. Yeah, so I mean, so, it, so I, it doesn't bother me that they ask for it. I, I don't really care if they ask for it, you know. Yeah, I think it's how you ask, you know what I mean? And also, like, the fact that he's asking for it just kind of pushes towards, like, hey, that is more important than anything else. That's, that's, that is more important than me playing. That is more important than me winning. That is more, like, the money that comes in. So... I think that might be a little bit of hesitation out of some coaches where they're just like, God, like all this kid wants is the month. Like he's not even concerned about the other aspects of it, but I get what you're saying. Like go get yours, like try and get as much as you can. You are worth what someone is willing to pay you. So if a lower tier school of like a Virginia or like a random ACC school is willing to pay you 800 grand, then do that. Don't, right. don't go to Alabama. But like know that like Saban is also paying you in championships and paying you in an opportunity to go to the NFL. And like that's what he's trying to give you instead of money. So like if it's 400000 but he's like, here's all this opportunity, then maybe you weigh what you get out of it. This is this is what's about to come out of my mouth is very unfortunate. It's very Butch Jones esque, <laughs> but like, but like, 
I really do believe that if you go spend three or four years with Saban, you're going to be a better young man heading into the world for it because of the the life lessons and the um, the things that he's going to do and and try to help grow you as a as a young individual. So yeah, he's you know I mean? the best coach in college football. So like yeah, yeah. Um, but needless to say, it's awesome. I love that he basically told him to kick rocks. Yeah. Okay, speaking of Saban, uh, he hires a new office coordinator, Tommy Rees from Notre Dame. Um, I, you know, this is uh, – Notre Dame was very just kind of mediocre offense this past year. I think what he's looking for is the 2020 Notre Dame, who, like, made it to the college football playoffs. It was a pretty decent team with Ian Books or whatever his name is as their quarterback. Um, and I don't know if it, it, Saban might look at these position or these like coordinator hirings as like, I'm giving you so many toys to play with that like, it's very, it's going to be very difficult for you to fail because I don't see Tommy Reese as like a top tier offensive coordinator in my head. He literally just graduated college in 2013. Like, Saban has been at Alabama longer than he has been coaching. You know what I mean? It just seems like it's a little bit of a jump. It's a little bit of a stretch because he his best year, Tommy Reese's best year as an offensive coordinator was his first year. And he's gone down two years in a row. And it's like – well, like the trajectory of where he's going doesn't seem like it's that great. And we even had a buddy who we've had on the podcast before text us and be like, you guys are in good hands. Uh, you're probably going to beat Alabama for the next few years because Tommy Reese got hired. I mean, what do you feel about it? Well, and I think you need to get some context with that. That individual that texted us. Uh, just recently stopped working in the college football world. So Taylor had worked at Notre Dame. He knows Tommy Reese. Like, and, and matter of fact, I haven't called Taylor yet or responded to that text yet um, to get his opinion because I thought that he liked Tommy. I thought, well, I'm not saying liked him personally, uh, or I think that I thought that he liked him as a offensive coordinator. This to me. Um, I don't really care about it. Like to me, it it just doesn't like. I mean, Saban, Saban, Saban. So it's like I don't care if exactly. he has. Tom, I don't care if he has Tommy Reese at offensive coordinator. I don't care if he has me at offensive coordinator. Like he's still going to do and have his imprint on certain things. Um, I think the only difference is when he had like a Lane Kiffin who was really really good. And so when you got, you know, I, I think Bill O'Brien was a good, you know, good offensive mind, good coach, and. You know, I sat in the Bama section uh, when they came here to play Tennessee, and those fans were not pumped about Bill O'Brien. I mean, they were complaining about him the whole time. Like, I, 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 they still scored forty nine points. It's just kind of like, what? How can you complain? Well, that's my thing about fans. Sometimes you got to take what they say with the grain of salt. I mean, I watch Bama, and I, I didn't watch them enough. Like, I'm not going to sit there. I haven't broke down their film or like watch watch game clips. Be like, yeah, I like Bill O'Brien or not, but like. You know, I thought they were still – I thought they were still fine from what I would see. But um, the time – I just think it's – like I think what is interesting about this is Tommy Reese was offered a pretty big deal to go to LSU. And I remember listening to a podcast, uh, the Ryan Rosillo podcast, which is my – probably my favorite, it and the Chris Long are the, my two favorite podcasts to listen to. And I remember Ryan had uh, Tommy Reese on there, and he was talking about that he thought he was going to go with Bill O'Brien – I mean, excuse me, with uh, Brian Kelly to LSU, but then like his heart was at Notre Dame. I mean, he played there, he's been there, like, and so it was like it was a big deal that he stayed to be there with Marcus Freeman and all that yeah. stuff. So, so now I'm like, okay, there's two, there's there's one or two things probably going on here. It's like if your heart's at Notre Dame and that's the place you love, that that would be like you or I coaching at Tennessee, or like on a smaller scale, that would be like me going to Knoxville Catholic as like the head coach. So it's like, what what are we leaving for? And the only reason I can think that, in my opinion, that he's leaving is because he's been at Notre Dame so long that this is an opportunity to see a different program, to see how 
the best program, arguably the best program, definitely the best head coach, how he does it. So it's like a way to learn and a way – I mean, he is only 30. I mean, that's crazy. That's me being the offensive coordinator. Uh, well, I'm 31. So are you 30 yet or are you 29 still? Uh, 29 still. Yeah, so it's like you or I basically going to be an offensive coordinator at Bama. That's a hell of an opportunity. So I look at it as like he's probably doing this as an opportunity. And the other thing that's making me think too is like, does he feel? Does Notre Dame? Does Marcus Freeman? Does Does Tommy Reese just feel like, hey, this this might be time for a like a little parting of ways so that it doesn't get stagnant? Because like you said, like Tommy was, I got it pulled up here. He was, you know, in two thousand and twenty one, they finished nineteenth nationally. Um, I don't know what they what they, they finished sixtieth this year. Six. Okay, so I'm glad you have that because I was about to try to pull that up. So it's like, does he go another? season does he make it only what make it through half the season and then there's some rumblings and then it's kind of like the whole like oh we got to get r- rid of one of our own and so like maybe this is a way just to say hey let's just go ahead and, and let's just go ahead. it's also like what's his aspirations like does he want to become a head coach then you staying at notre dame you're like if you want to become a head coach and like maybe your ultimate goal is to head coach notre dame then you staying there is probably not the best for you. Like what would be better for you is to go somewhere else, get coaching experience, get a head coaching experience, then come back because staying there under Marcus Freeman and doing well, you just make Marcus Freeman more valuable as a coordinator. So, I mean, that could go into it. Like maybe that's his ultimate goal is to be head coach at Notre Dame. Say, say, say if ideally, and, and, and I know these coaches, most of them, like they have a maybe a dream job, but these coaches get so desensitized to the 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 uniform that they're wearing. And I mean, the hoodie, the polo that they're wearing. I mean, it really is a very much of a I'm all of all I'm all Tennessee. And then someone offers me more money, a better opportunity. And it's like, you know, go Missouri Tigers or, or whatever. So it's like, um, but I I agree that like say if that was his ultimate job or or screw even if Notre Dame like he just wants to be a head coach and like you need to go learn from the goat you need to go learn how he runs his program you need to get different offensive influences and different offensive um, you know just go see different stuff so like personally I think it's a massive massive win for Tommy Reese. Yeah. For multiple reasons besides just what I just laid out because you're going to work for Saban and you're getting to be in the SEC and just seeing a different caliber of, um, I'm not going to say necessarily athlete, but maybe competition because mm-hmm. I know Notre Dame pulls in a lot of good people. But, yeah, I think it's a win-win. And like I said, you get to leave Notre Dame kind of on your own terms. Like you're not getting fired. And yep. like, like you said, that's a great point. If he's doing well, it just makes Marcus Freeman look so up. And if you do really well at Notre Dame – I get what what you like. You can go get a head coaching job. Like, say if he did a great job as offensive coordinator, then maybe he can go get another uh, head coach or go get a head coaching job opportunity. But like, is that at like a Virginia Virginia Tech or yeah. you know like or is it a you know Ohio Bobcats? Like, is I mean, it a, I don't know what level. Like, you know, I mean, type if you're of, under Saban, you can get an SEC head coaching job. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Pruitt. <laughs> Yeah, and I did think it was funny on that article I read that it was talking about that Tommy had a really good offensive line and tight end production. It's like that wasn't Tommy Reese. That's just Notre Dame. Notre Dame has great offensive linemen and tight end every year. Yeah, so, that's true. They've had it for a long time. They had it when he was playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, jump to the next thing. So we got Stetson Bennett getting uh, arrested for public intoxication. And the the story goes that he was outside a bunch of houses or apartments or something and like a gated thing and knocking on doors because he couldn't find his friend's place. He was literally just trying to look for his friend at 6 a.m. I saw something that was like, you know, he was projected at maybe a fourth rounder. And this is definitely going to like hurt his draft stock and da, 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 da. And I'm like, yes, this this will hurt his draft stock, but like it's he was he's getting drafted as a backup. Like, this isn't your franchise quarterback. You know what I mean? And if like Baker Mayfield can get tackled trying to run from cops, 
be the first overall pick, then I think Stetson Bennett can be okay with two national titles under his belt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't uh, – yeah, I'm not even really concerned about how this looks for his draft stock because – um, if people wanted to, like you said, he's not going to be super highly drafted anyways. If people like him and wanted to draft him anyways, they're probably going to have a conversation with him. But like, would this, would I be caught doing this? Absolutely not, because I'm going to be walking the clearest, cleanest path I can until, you know, eight, late April, early May until I do yeah. get drafted. But I don't, this isn't a, this is more of a, this isn't a huge deal to me. Like it's, it's public in talks. Like he didn't get in like, a fight. It's not like he yeah. was it's, it's, endangering it's, 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 somebody. I'm going to say he's a college kid. He's a college kid. He's a little, <laughs> little old. He's a little yeah. older than college kid. But, like, this happens. Like, kids go out, they drink, they party, they have a good time. You know, lots and lots of people do it. But it's about, you know, being responsible and stuff like that. So, like, good thing. It sounds like he was walking and banging on doors just trying to find where he was supposed to go. You know, I mean, not- he literally could have been the most responsible but he's legally allowed to drink, goes out with friends, drinks, Ubers back to this friend's house. And he's like trying to find the house to get inside and like dead everything he was supposed to do, but then knocks on people's doors and they call the cops on him. And it's like, right. I, I, I really don't think like if he was in Georgia, he gets arrested. Oh, probably not. Yeah. No. Someone like, the cops would come up and be like, "Okay, I get it. You're trying to get your friend's house. Like, hey, don't worry about it. Thanks for the titles. <laughs> like, it would never happen. <laughs> Thanks for the titles. Yeah. Give him a little slap on the butt. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's 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 funny. Like, it's not a big deal to me. But the only thing that I would say is like, it's not a big deal. He's a college kid. He went out and had a good time. I mean, the kid has just lived an absolute. Whether I like him or not, I think he's. I think he comes off like a super lame and doucher. Now, it usually would be someone that I would really like and root for because it's like, man, like you walked on, you know, you really did it. Like you you, you lived that fantasy world, fantasy dream, and you won the national championship. It's like it's a cool story, but like he does come off as like a douche or kind of like a lame yeah. And so it's like – and that's not just me being a Tennessee fan. Like I, there's plenty of players for opposite teams that I like secretly love <laughs> and will and we'll say that like I like him or respect him, but – But, yeah, so it's like, I get it. You're out. You're having a good time. You just won a second national title. Like, enjoy yourself. But, like, you know, and and be smart about it. This would just – you just never caught me doing this, like I said, because I would have been squeaky, squeakly clean going – just me personally. Just me personally. Whether I am projected to go second round or sixth, seventh, undrafted free agent, like, I am doing everything I can to make it look squeaky clean. So, if your boy – was going to go out and have some drinks and stuff. I'm, I am absolutely like someone's going to be there with me. That's like, when I fit, start feeling a little, I'm like, all right, drive me home. Like I'm getting out of here. I'm going to get in bed. I mean, I didn't like, I literally stopped drinking the whole time I was trying to get ready for pro day, like for like three and a half, like three months. It was yeah. just like, okay, that's what I need to do. Right. Like, right. No more doing, no more going out. No, we're doing that stuff. Like, just buckle down and do what you need to do for it. And like, I, it's also like the quarterback thing, like quarterbacks, like they don't get hit at practice. Their bodies aren't as bad. Like they don't bench when you work out, they do like single arm dumbbell stuff. Like it's just they like they get a little bit easier of a path to where they're like, I can drink. It's not going to affect my arm. <laughs> you know, what I mean? Like no big deal. But it's like I'll drink, and it's like I just gained seven pounds. Like I, <laughs> I need to be careful. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But it was funny, like all the Tennessee, all 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 Twitter and Tennessee fans, like using this to take a shot at him and stuff like that because they just don't like him. But it's like I saw it, and I just like you know, it's it's not a dude. It's a college kid drinking. Like you know, like I said, like he he didn't he didn't run from the cops. He wasn't like trying to start a fight. He didn't. uh you know, he didn't um, get in a car and drive. And this is coming from someone, like I said, who is not a Georgia fan and thinks he's kind of a doucher. But, you yeah, know. I mean, Tyler Bray threw a beer bottle at somebody. So, like, we got to, we got to kind of, you know, turn it down a little bit. Like, we've had our own experiences. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And then last on the list, uh, we're going to talk about teams claiming previous players. So, it has been a big topic of, Bama claiming Jalen Hurts and the 
Joe Burrow LSU alum being claimed by Ohio State. Uh, and my thing is, is like, okay, well, if you're you're going to claim a guy who played for you before and then left, and then you're probably also going to claim the guy who played for someone else before and came in. And like, are you just going to claim everybody who spent any time with the program, no matter what, like, like I guarantee if Henry Toto was like doing well in the NFL, they'd be like, look at Bama Bills. Look at our uh, Alabama alum making an all pro team. I'm like, so you're doing it both ways. You're you're having your cake and eating it too. Like I just the the visceral that Alabama fans had toward Jalen Hurts because he couldn't get the job done for him and how much they wanted to it in. And they're just like, please like bench him. I mean, they even threw Tua out there after he got hurt in the SEC championship. Jalen Hurts brought them back and won it for them. They were like, all right, get back on the bench. We got to put Tua back. <laughs> and like, it was just like, screw you, dude. And it, like, you pushed, you pushed him out. You made him go to another school. He didn't want to. You made him. It just, it just feels like if you make him do that, you, like you, you aren't allowed to be like, hey, bud. They like, I got to, I got to stop you there. They didn't make him. He just had to go somewhere else to play. He lost the job. They didn't make him. It wasn't like, the fans or the coaches were outside of his dorm and like, you got to get out of here, pack your bag. So like they didn't make him leave. Like he just lost the job. I'm sure Saban would have been very happy to keep Jalen Hurts on the roster for injury purposes and to have him as a backup. But like Jalen had to go somewhere to play. Um, so I disagree with you there, but I don't really care about this claiming stuff. Like, I, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, I think it kind of hurts the argument for, LSU and Ohio State, or it helps Ohio State when Joe Burrow gets interviewed. He's like, yeah, I'm always going to be a Buckeye. Just like, you know, I have a part of LSU in me. You know, I don't I don't think that they can claim him because he never played there. But I actually don't mind if Alabama claims Jalen Hurts. Like, he did play there. Like, he did help them win. So, it's like, I'm fine with Oklahoma claiming him and Bama claiming him because he played it both. Um, I, I don't think that, like – you know, I don't know if this is someone you really want to associate yourself with because I think it's a, a clown and uh, and they've mortgaged their future off of him, which could have been a bad decision. But like Kyler Murray, like, you know, like Texas a and shouldn't claim Kyler if he did really good in the NFL because like he didn't really actually play there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he he went to he went to Oklahoma. So it's like for me. So are, would you claim Henry Toto? At Tennessee? Yeah, like if he goes in no. and does really well. No, because he quit on us. Like he left. Like he left because things were bad. He didn't leave because he lost his job or anything like that. Like he no. So I I I mean, if he went and was all pro and like a Hall of Fame linebacker, I'm not gonna be like oh Tennessee produced him or like we did. No, I could care less. Like yeah. I said, I'm I don't really care about all this stuff. But I just for for me, like if you went and you played for two or three years and were good and really helped the team win, but then for whatever reason, you go to another spot, like, I'm not a fan of Bama, so it's like, say if Jalen left to go to Oklahoma because he wanted to play for Lincoln Riley and sign a big NIL deal, well, they're going to be super pissed about that if he had left on his own, um, but he didn't. He just lost a job. So Yeah, and then it, it, also, it also feels like at Alabama, he was a winning quarterback, but no one would say he was a great quarterback. And it was never like – like people were like, yeah, he can run the ball, but he can't really throw it that well. Like it's his receivers that are really doing it for him. And like he wasn't seen – like he wasn't going to be like a high draft pick. He wasn't going to be like – like people were like, here's another Alabama quarterback who wins because everyone else around him is really good and he's never going to be anything in the NFL. Like that was the thought of him at Alabama. Then he goes to Oklahoma where – Lincoln Riley has proven he can produce very good quarterbacks, almost like gets a renaissance of his skill level, gets taught better by Lincoln Riley, gets better at his craft, and actually becomes a viable quarterback at the next level. And it almost feels like Alabama threw away the trash 
because it wasn't good enough for him. And now he's come out of the gutter and he's really good. And they're like, look at our boy. Look at our boy. Look at him out there getting to the Super Bowl. And it's like, well, you didn't want your boy. I, I That's how I feel. Like, I, I just really do feel like you didn't want your boy. You didn't want him to play. You wanted him to start. You wanted Tua to start behind him. And now it's I, like, well, I, that's where I'm at. I just, I just don't like that. I don't like to just – that's what I mean by force out. It's like you take away his position from him. And yeah. give it no, to somebody else. When you put it that way, yeah, no, no, I, I get that. I get, I, I, I get that. I understand that. That you know, the fan base was like, man, we love Jalen. Like, we really, you know, I'm just saying, if they did, it was like, we love him, we respect him, he plays hard, but like, he's not good enough, and two is better, so we need two to play. So it's like that's the way you look at it. And then I get it that he goes off, keeps grind. By the way, I really, really, really respect and love how Jalen carries himself and all that stuff. And I was one of the people that are like, no way he makes it in the NFL. Now, granted. He still has a long way to go. I mean, if he wins a Super Bowl, then, yeah, his career could basically be over and no one can ever take away the fact that he's a Super Bowl winning, you know, quarterback. Yeah. But I just love how he can carries himself, how he handles himself. Like, it's all about hard work. I like, just get better. But anyway. I mean, the fact that he stayed for a whole other year after the fact, after he got benched, it's like speaks a lot to him. Yeah, dude. Yeah, people that know him and are around him, they talk about how great of a leader he is and great of a person he is. So yeah, and like I said, he's young in his career, so I'm not going to anoint him that he's like some great NFL quarterback. But um, I'm happy for the success that he's having. But I, I get what you're saying. I get, I do get what you, what you're saying. It's like we want to. We didn't help him get to where he is now, but we want to yeah, celebrate that he is. Yeah. So I, I get that, and I can I can respect that and understand that. I would probably just even though I, I see where you're coming from and I get that, like, I just don't know if I even care enough. Like, sure. <laughs> like if, Bama, if like a Bama fan wants to argue with me, will we produce Jalen Hurts? I'd be like, no, you didn't. Like you didn't produce Jalen Hurts. Like, so I'm not like, you know, if I'm sitting there having an argument, like, okay, you know, Tennessee produces better quarterbacks than Alabama. And they're like, well, we have Jalen Hurts. It's like, well, no, you didn't. Like he went, cause I would just use the argument. Like he went and he learned under Lincoln Riley compared to, you know. Yeah. And it's like, it's proven that Lincoln Riley produces good quarterbacks. Like he's had a Heisman win. He's had three Heisman winners and Jalen was close. Like Jalen was in the Heisman race when he was at Oklahoma. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I just think that, I just think the Jalen one's a little bit different for me because he did, he did play there and he did help them win some very big games compared to Ohio state fans wanting to say, we can claim Joe Burrow. It's like, dude, never saw the field with you guys. So like that one's a little bit different, yeah. even though I think Joe just says like, I'm always going to be a Buckeye because Joe's that type of guy. He's like, Hey, I, you know, I love my, you know, I'm assuming he's going to be like, you know, I love my time there. You know, he's in Ohio. You know, you, you, you want to know where you can claim him at the alumni events. <laughs> Cause, right. Cause he got a degree. That That's where you can play. He was a, uh, Buckeye in the classroom, but don't 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 claim him on the field. He yeah. never played. I think he played like forty snaps or something like that. Like it was like nothing. He was a backup backup. And I see all the and I do see on Twitter sometimes where the people are like, "Oh, they're so stupid for letting him walk," and all the uh, Ohio State fans get super triggered and they're like, "No, look at his stats at LSU his first year compared to when we had Braxton Miller. I think it's Braxton Miller. It's like, no, I, I get it. I get why he didn't leave. I mean, it just they had about- they had like four or five stars in their in their no, quarterback saying, room. But, like it was yes. just like. I don't fault Ohio State. Ohio State didn't know that he was going to go and have one of the greatest no. college football years. Because, listen, that was his second year. At, at, at LSU, his first year was very, very middle of the road. They and, even, and, and even – it wasn't even, like, starting that season that he just blew up. Like, he was, like, still just, like, had some picks earlier in the season, like, was okay, and then just kind of got better and better and more meshed with, you know, Jamar and Justin Jefferson and Moss, the tight end, like – it, it got better as the season went on because I remember watching like an early game. It was like the second or third week of the season. They were playing um, like Kentucky or something. Like they were playing another SEC team. And I remember being like, I mean, he's okay. Like the, like at Joe Burrow, I was like, he's okay. Like he is missing some balls here. But then it just blew up. Like they just kept winning. He kept getting better and more touchdown games like – the progression it happened at LSU. Like you can definitely see that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I don't fault Ohio state for letting him walk. It just, no. it's a bad, 
It's just they got unfortunate and it looked yeah, bad. It but. just it just stinks. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, it was great talking to you on this Saturday morning, Reed. Beautiful face you have there. It's always <laughs> great seeing you. Uh, okay. Thank you guys for watching and listening. If you are watching, please subscribe. Uh, hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Um, if you're listening, rate and review. Download and re-download. It helps us so much. Uh, follow us on social media at Believe in Tennessee uh, on our main account at rbacon 26 read at Kyler Curbison for myself on all social medias. Uh, buy our merch. How we doing, bud? T-shirts in orange and white. Um, and just appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And as always, go Vols.